What up, Fritter fans? Jonathan here with you, and today I want to go through and talk about some of the different knots that we use for spearfishing and how you can best apply them to make sure you never miss that fish. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is a pretty simple one and some of these actually all might be fairly simple but just to kind of show you exactly how they work and when you might use them so the first one that i like doing is called a girth hitch uh, and so let's say we have some sort of anchor point whether that be a line or the loop on your belt whatever it may be um, what you're going to do is simply take a piece of rope you're going to double it over you're going to pass it through whatever medium that you feel that you need to tie to. And then you're gonna take that loop and press it over the two free ends, right? So it's super simple, but it's an easy way to just attach something without having to make any long lasting hard knots, right? Really simple to undo, you just simply pull it off. Right? So coming from the other side, just to kind of show you one more time comes through those guys and pulls through. So very, very simple, simple knot. Okay, the next one that we're gonna do is if you wanted to uh, make a loop on the end of a line, and that way you could either clip off to it or maybe you want to attach your real line to it, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can make a loop. The simplest way is to bend this guy in half and then just tie an overhand knot, right? So you're going to simply pass it underneath or over top and pull through, right? You can kind of dress this knot, make it nice and clean, make it as big or as small as you want, um, but you then do have two free ends on the other side. Um, so let's say that we only want one free end on the other side, we would choose a different knot. So the next one that we would use is a bowlin. Uh, what I would do with this one is actually tie it to something, right? So I'm gonna pass through the item that I want to tie it to. I'm gonna take my tail end, which is this guy, and my leading end, which is this guy. I'm gonna separate the two, making sure I know which one is which. In my running end, I'm going to pass the tail on top, right? So if you notice there that this tail edge is on top of my running edge. That loop is then going to help me create the knot. So I'm gonna take my free end here, I'm gonna come up the loop. I'm then gonna go down around my running edge and then back in the same loop where it came from. What I'm gonna do is hold these two, right? So my loose end and my loop end. I'm gonna hold those two tight and pull this guy. What's gonna happen is it's gonna create my bowline. Right? So obviously this is really big, you could make it smaller, you could make it bigger, whatever you want, but that is what you want your bowlin to look like. So the nice thing about the bowlin is once it's tied, you can untie this guy no matter how tight it gets. Um, so what you can do is you flip the knot over and this little loop on the top, all you have to do is pick this guy down and it simply opens up the knot and allows you to untie it very, very simply. So that knot is really nice if you know that you're gonna have a lot of strain on it and it's gonna be super tight and you want to loosen it up or untie it at some point. Um, the next thing that I wanna do is um, when I have Dyneema that I wanna to tie to my shaft, right? I don't wanna do this big bulky knot. Uh, the bowline is pretty small, but there is one actually even smaller. Um, so this is the knot that I like to use to tie uh, my Dyneema on my shooting line and on my spears. So I'll take the, uh, the line itself, I make a open overhand, so something just like that, right? I then pass the line through the shaft because I'm gonna need this uh, Dyneema tied to my shaft. I'm then gonna come up through that open overhand and then I'm gonna come underneath and back through. So what's happening here is that when I pull this guy tight, 
this overhand is going to get tight, right? And then what it's going to try to do is pull this line through that open overhand. So what's happened is these two knots have been actually pulled together. And so the harder I pull this way, the tighter those two are going to get. And so this guy is actually a very, very useful knot uh, if you want something small and easy, quickly tied, um, when you are trying to attach your line to your shaft. So a very easy, quick, small knot that keeps it laying flat against your spear. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is a square knot. If you've got two lines that you want to then join together with a very simple and small knot, uh, this is gonna be what you're gonna use. So we're gonna do a overhand, right? So like that. And if you just do another overhand and not pay attention to where the lines go, what'll happen is you have one on top and one underneath. And this actually won't bind. This will uh, slip and run out and not work. So that's not what we want. So we're gonna undo that one and we're gonna come the other way, right? So I want to make sure that the line that's coming in from the bottom goes out the bottom as well. So it simply goes back down and I can test this because the blue line is coming on top and the yellow line is coming on the bottom. So when I pull those guys together, that is going to create a square knot and it will not move, right? Some guys will tie knots in their running end to make sure that it doesn't move, especially depending on the material that you have. Sometimes uh, certain lines are slippery um, versus others bite on themselves. So if you really want to be secure about it, you can throw two overhand knots in the running end and ensure that that won't go anywhere. Um, it's really, you know, it's one of those things that you have gotta make sure you know what kind of knots you're gonna be tying and when you're gonna use those knots. Um, I was in Costa Rica uh, with a buddy of mine. We were shooting a bunch of cuberas in the rocks and everything. And there it's, in this part of Costa Rica that we were in, it was super sharp rocks and they either use cable or Dyneema. Um, and when you use monofilament, the typical shooting line, it gets cut really easily. So I was using Dyneema um, and I had a, a buddy of mine tie one of my shafts on and that was a mistake, right? So I shot a big Cabrera, he went into a hole and the line just pulled straight through, right? Um, this was years ago, um, but unfortunately, I didn't tie my own line. So either you need to learn how to tie your own or come to us and our spear gun smith will make sure that he's tying their lines for you the right way so that you never actually lose your shaft. Now, luckily for me, we were able to back dive it and find the spot where the Kubera came off uh, with, his, with my shaft and we found it and got him in the boat, which was awesome. But... It could have all been avoided if I had just looked at my knots that were on the shaft and made sure that I was squared away, literally. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to leave us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please be sure to do so so you never miss another one of our cool videos. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching our videos, guys. Uh, we always love giving you guys good content and educating you guys more on the products that we use. Uh, if you have more questions or comments of things that you wanna learn more about and videos that you wanna see, then uh, leave a comment in our discussion board on our channel. But for the next time in between there, check out these videos right here and we'll see you guys in the next video.